G'day guys, I've received a physics question on one of my videos, so I thought I'd just go through it with everybody. So the question says, to slow down a car, a braking force of 1200 newtons is applied for 10 seconds. How much force would be needed to produce the same change in velocity in 6 seconds? Alright, so when I'm doing any kind of question like this, I like to just set out what the variables I have to start with, just so I know what I have and what I don't have. So we, all, we already know that we've got an initial force, let's call it F1, equal to 1200 newtons. And we also have a time, time one, equal to 10 seconds. Cool. How much force would be needed to produce the same change in velocity in six seconds? Okay, so we have a, we also have a T2 number which is equal to six seconds. Great, so what we're first of all, the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna attack it using um, a little bit of algebra. Now, here we know that force, one of the equations of motion that we have is force is equal to mass times acceleration. So what we have here is we have our force, F1, 1200, would have to be equal to the mass times the acceleration of an object. Now what I can do here is I can say that acceleration of this object then is going to be equal to the force over the mass or 1200 divided by the mass of the car. Cool. Now the mass is one of these units that's going to be a constant throughout the entire question. I hope you guys follow me with that. The mass of the car isn't going to change as it breaks. So what we're then going to do is we're going to substitute this into a equations of motion question. So what I want to do is I want to try and derive a relationship between the final and the initial velocity as well as this uh, acceleration term that I've just derived. So what I'm going to use, I'm going to use this equations of motion question that I have here. I'm going to say V is equal to U plus AT. Okay. So what this is going to do, it's going to bring this 10 seconds and this 6 seconds into play. And we're also going to be able to start to find a relationship between the final velocity and the initial velocity. Now I hope you guys understand that it doesn't matter if we're deaccelerating from say 100 kilometers an hour to 80 kilometers an hour or from 60 kilometers an hour to 40 kilometers an hour. If the change in velocity is the same, the, uh, all the force and time characteristics will be the same. So to make things easy, what we can do is we can say our final velocity is going to be just zero. So this is for our initial um, 1200 newtons for 10 seconds. We're going to say that our final velocity is zero. We don't know where we're coming from. We don't know what our initial velocity is. We do know our acceleration. We found it out before. 1200 over m. And we know our time for the first situation, 10 seconds. So what we can say is we can rearrange this a little bit and have it as, well, u is going to equal, we can times 10 by 1200 to be 12,000 and take over the side. So it's going to be negative 12,000 divided by the mass. Cool. So this is our... Um, our value of the initial velocity if the final velocity is zero and we deaccelerate over 10 seconds. So let's go on to our second scenario and you'll see why I'm doing all of this algebra. So again, we're going to accelerate and deaccelerate from the same point to the same finishing point. So our final velocity again, we'll just say V is equal to U plus AT. So we know that we're going to finish at zero. We're going to start from the same point, so negative 12,000 over m. We don't know what our acceleration is going to be, but we do know we've got to do it over six seconds. So what we're going to do 
I'm going to rearrange this. I'm going to take the 12,000 over M to the other side. Is equal to 6A. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by 6. So I have Twelve thousand divided by six m is equal to a. Cool. So we can simplify this. Twelve thousand on six is just two thousand. On m is equal to a. Now the question is asking how much force will be needed. So. Finally, what we're going to do is we know that force, let's go F2, is equal to the mass times the acceleration 2. So this is A2 here. So therefore, F2 is going to be the mass times the acceleration, which we just solved. Now notice, because the mass of the car isn't going to change, the they will cancel out. They are effectively the same number. So what I can say in the end is I can say, well, therefore, F2 is equal to 2,000 newtons. Cool. So let's just quickly run through what I did there. What I to start with, obviously, I found out all of the, I wrote down or categorized all of the variables that I knew, what they told me. I then um, pulled out a relationship which will relate both the variables I've been given with variables that I'm looking for. So I'm looking for, in this case, the starting velocity as a um, as a function of this acceleration sort of uh, constant that I've got. So what I can do then is when I sub that that starting uh, velocity, the initial velocity, into my second velocity formula, I can then solve for the acceleration. Using the acceleration, I can then put it into a just a basic force equals mass times acceleration um, equation, and because the masses of the car don't change, they cancel out and I get my final force number. So this method can be sort of rote, learned by rote, but it is good if you sort of know how to flick between formulas and you feel comfortable um, expressing acceleration in terms of another sort of constant, and in this case it was mass. So I suggest you work through this problem a couple of times, try and find a couple of other ones. Again, if you have any problems, um, don't hesitate to leave them in the comments section below and I'll do my best to solve them. But until then, guys, just practice, practice, practice. It makes perfect, I promise. And definitely enjoy your physics.